that she can do no yes. i think that would be very useful if you give her a uh, set of black and white model pictures the colors and then you can substantiate it with the drawings take enough and i think you should do it only today and don't postpone it yes. right because i have to write also a letter to her yeah let's do that Cities have been always um, a place where great civilizations have happened. And um, lately we all as planners, as architects, and I would say as common people also realize that due to large influx from the hinterland, cities are getting overpopulated. And um, with the overpopulation, you have an immense pressure on the infrastructure. You have an immense pressure on the demand for housing. you have a immense pressure on the land development with this pressure there are certainly qualities that are eroding very rapidly in our work we try to emphasize on development of open areas as well built up areas in a certain balance because balance of these two very essential components for human communities are the future of the city as we know as architects uh, all projects do start with a brief a brief by the client uh, and in this case it has been similar we had uh, many discussions initially with the clients about the brief interestingly um, the brief is formed very quickly by a client in this case we had uh, to cater to two families the parents as well the the son with his family and three children and they wanted to have two dwelling units two nearly identical dwelling units now the the brief stops here and i think as as a architect to have more information about the brief you have to engage yourself in a certain dialogue with the client the dialogue is a very essential part because it extracts the story the narrative for the entire building and i think many biases that are always in the head of the architect as well in the head of the client are actually extracted and with time they are dropped um the client from the beginning was very clear that they don't want to built as much as the far permits them which certainly is a very interesting approach and in my opinion that's a need based approach so at the level of brief at the level of briefing and the dialogue that subsequently takes place you realize that this greed is dropped in favor of creating lot of open spaces in favor of spaces that have value as we got this uh, this brief and the dialogue was established and the sizes of rooms were suddenly curtailed down to smaller spaces which itself is again speaking for the client this client was very clear they don't need living rooms that are 1000 square feet they don't need bedroom that are 500 square feet with humongous dressers they said we reduce it in favor of the terraces in favor of other open spaces that their children and they themselves can with the family enjoy now we had thought certainly of various possibility of cutting this piece of cube one was certainly a cut that we could do here we felt only this would be creating a disparity because a front would mean certainly an advantage a rear would mean because services normally are in the rear servants quarters are generally in delhi in the rear lanes facing the rear lanes so this would be not the appropriate way of cutting it the other possibility would have been to cut it across and create two pieces of houses because the idea was not to do apartments but finally through our simulations and through our dialogue within the team in the office um we felt cutting the whole building 
in two units ground first floor unit second third floor unit stacking them on top of each other would be the right path now the key inspiration behind developing this further was um, well, was the manifesto by Le Corbusier, I, I will dwell a bit on that. Corbusier's manifesto on architecture and the future of architecture which he presented through uh, L'Esprit Nouveau in 1920, in the 20s. It was, um, Esprit Nouveau would mean the new spirit. So he wanted to infuse a new spirit into the city by, by developing new modules of housing, houses for communities of all shades and colors, not only community for low, low, uh, low end housing, but as well for students as, and high end housing. Now his as aspects in this manifesto will be driven and expressed through five points and few of these points are very uh, commonly known now and they are part of a building culture. So his idea was that if I have a building I need to look into the car, so I make a stilt, so stilt for cars. So he introduced the entire building uh, on stills and he kept it above the ground so your cars could move very easily into it. The other aspects, since he dedicated the entire ground which was traditionally the garden, he had to look at new densities, we shouldn't forget that. The real aspect of his proposal was also to see the future population growth in this country and we are talking about nearly a hundred years back he envisaged this issue and today it is a reality in, in our cities globally I would say. Um, so the car was on the ground, now the ground was lost so he said I will do a garden on the top. So I have my trees and my gardens on the top, very nice. And the third very essential program for him was, which I would feel today is not, uh, and it, one can critically review it, is not very, very essential, is his windows. The windows and the facade should have been very flexible. So I could introduce anywhere my facade. Now, how did he achieve this facade that it got freed from the from the other structural uh, elements and the compulsion that you have when you build a build, make a building. What he did is he took his plan and put it on, on columns, which he called pilotes. And through one of his, um, in the manifesto earlier, from one of his schemes, which is called the domino, he, he expressed through this plan the possibility and opened it up to, to the user to create, to create spaces that are free. So he calls it the free plan. Now we felt um, this is certainly a brilliant idea and very applicable when you stack a building on top of each other. When you stack you want to have as much flexibility as possible because the family dynamics change or in the beginning only, the parents would have had a different plan, floor plan than the children. We had only one critical observation on this and um, that has to do with our personal outlook to architecture as well a bit also um, wanting to rationalize this plan. We said these number of columns are actually a problem when it comes to real practice and putting the plan together because they are an obstruction. We said, instead of making a plan with so many columns, let us simply introduce two cores. A core which then would have, in principle that's what it is, which will then have all the services. So, my core plus my entire MAP. Now, what would it mean? That along these little cores, I could have my plumbing, my electrical shaft, and my air conditioning shaft. The entire vertical supply, because in making of a building that is stacked on top of each other, we have to realize the most important part is uh, are the, how, do you, how do you manage the services vertically.
Now in this case we wanted as you see there also you, we wanted concrete to be the single large expression through and through in the building in different forms. These goers hold now all these six floors starting from the basement up to the roof and allow them to develop a plan that is completely independent from floor-wise. Once we had established these two cores that gave us now enough space, we had to look into how to accommodate the, the wet areas as I call them, the bathrooms, all that what needs plumbing, all that what needs water supply and discharge. So we opted then to create along this here our, our shafts, our shafts and attach our bathrooms to these cores. Now in principle, that also helped us in resolving the air conditioning because of the exposed RCC slab, we could have not thought of any plumbing, any air conditioning or electrical work going under the ceiling or through the ceiling. So these bathrooms hence had a false ceiling. All the bathrooms and all the, all the other wet areas like kitchens do have a false ceiling which then caters to our equipment, air conditioning machines, um, ducting. In fact, this building has, I should, I should elaborate a bit on that, this building has a fresh air system. As we all know, um, environmental conditions, especially during Diwali, are not very conducive to uh, opening the windows. So we had opted there, therefore, and the clients were very keen on that, um, we went for not too many openable windows. Dust ingress is an issue in buildings um, besides this pollution. So we thought we will have a fresh air system which will then run through these, these areas and discharge them into various habitable spaces. Once we had, we had established these cores, it was very, very clear how the possibilities are now thrown in when it came to forming the building. So we had this cube, decided to take two floors, but these were too tight and too closed. So the next step was how do we introduce the outdoor spaces. We took, we took an entire floor out of this here and developed a developed a uh, duple a duple which allowed them to have a identical nearly identical footprint for for the users and the cores were then holding all the floors together with the services as i mentioned so i will have now i will create it I created now a garden which could then allow, so you got here these two profiles which are L-shaped profiles and unlike in Corbusier's case where he had put the roof garden as his, uh, in his manifesto as the place, as a breakout place, we thought for a duple, a breakout place on the roof would have been not adequate because the guys in the ground floor unit had a disadvantage. We introduced a hanging garden between them by creating this fissure, which was scooped out then out of the building. So this hanging garden was then uh, a, a place where top floor family and the ground floor family could come together for family get togethers and as a breakout space for various other activities. The lower level, as I had mentioned, would go for the parking then this is our road so you get one two three floors here one floor here the fourth one and in between you have the garden floor which in this unit from the top was accessed and had a gym um, let me now show you how each and every space is constituted, how each space in detail has been scaled, 
how smaller spaces, smaller open spaces have been scooped out of the building because the forming, the forming of the building is based on a, I would say, almost a traditional method, Indian method of developing spaces. It is not about building only a space together, but also a negative process, taking things out. I was mentioning initially the spiritual path is actually a path where you keep on dropping, where you keep on taking out. So this building, and let me, let me now show this on the model, is about taking out spacing and creating voids. Now if I start with the ground floor, let me first move a part which is, which is right now a part of the setback area. It is about five feet into the side setback area. So our set, first step was to remove this here and go back to 10 feet. 10 feet setback area which was then which is then landscaped and a part of the access to one of the building units thereafter we have to remove the area which is meant now for the car so we we received now here the stilt area for the car parking which is a part of the landscaping also so is free floating into the space and as we move to the now we generated here the ground floor, the terrace above the ground floor. I will remove now from the second floor some parts to allow more garden and landscaped areas. Now I got two terraces, one terrace above the first uh, above the ground floor, one terrace above the uh, first floor. We do have to remove this as well which creates then the hanging garden. Um, now, few more details that I would like to remove here. A small area that we removed, remove out of the uh, ground floor, which is then a small water body and can be also housing some sculptures. It's a, you can say, kind of urban window, which connects also to the neighborhood. On the other side, we do have define now the entrance area to the first floor and ground floor. Now this is very essential because as I mentioned the climate in the building, the sun path, the greenery has to now enter the building. So removing the mass across the building here um, allows, allows all this to happen now in the building. So there is a certain freshness that comes into the building by removing the mass. As I then go into more details and take off more spaces, we'll realize I can take out, say, this space. This volume is gone. Now, removing this volume, you suddenly have the rear block, which is the master bedroom in this building. You have the rear block get connected to the front. So the view into the front road and the greenery of the surrounding is connected now. So you have in fact like into the first floor and the deck area which connects them across to the front you have achieved that also on the top floor to give more breakout spaces we have we have more terraces which are about 10 by 10 feet created at each floor these are also sources to receive light to create also covered against rain and climate covered areas which then protects also the windows against heavy rains. Now let me show you, these are now, these are now, let me reiterate that, the ground floor, the terrace on the first floor, the ground floor has here completely the public spaces of the building, so a living room in the front, dining spaces, kitchen, and on the top floor we have only bedrooms. Similarly, the floor on the top does the reverse of it. So we have created two units, two L-shaped units that are dovetailed in such a way that the bedrooms come into this space, into the second floor, and the top floor is then public space and then bedrooms for the parents with the master bedroom here, family room here, dining room, kitchen, and the large living room. The two cores are being identified through these two positions and they go through, as I mentioned, they go through and through through the building. 
Um, this is now the dwelling unit. As we move, if I remove this here, as we move into the basement, let me remove the entire top block now and show you how we have developed further the lower floors. This was the entrance going up to the first floor. Let me remove this here. And below the entrance, we have in, incorporated a very narrow tight staircase, which is responding then to the activities that happen in the basement. We got a spa for the entire family, a health with health facility and steam, and a small courtyard that helps us feed even light into the remaining part of of the basement which has some family uh, games areas. So in total this is this is your entire building floor. As the entire building is made out of exposed concrete and exposed concrete goes even into the internal spaces. Um, we had to take a lot of care about how to secure it against heat impact during hot summers in Delhi. The entire interior hence has been leaving certain um, areas that are still exposed like the core areas in, in concrete. Other areas that are room spaces, habitable spaces have been thermally uh, insulated by having an insulation material and then a plasterboard on top of it. The client was very keen from the very beginning that we, we will have an interior that will develop organically. I find that very interesting because it means that as per the necessity, the furniture that they, during their journey to other, other states, countries, will pick up, that during the journey and as they grow into the spaces, they would select the furniture. And I find that the right method for generally for buildings because I think a ready-made solution is too instant and doesn't respond profound enough, profoundly enough to the spaces. But we were allowed and uh, to develop certain elements, certain features of the interiors like the staircases that are very essential to the house. And we do have here different types of staircases and the type of staircases selected were very strongly in response to the quality of the space. If for example I go into the basement, we thought the journey to the basement which is under the, under the ground needs to be deeper, darker, the sound of that staircase should feel differently. So we opted for a concrete staircase with a, with a uh, IPS finish, a color IPS finish to enliven the journey into the basement. While the, the staircases between the two floors the, in the, within the do place have been made out of steel, highly customized detailing, steel and glass um, treads those glass treads have been um, in four layers, so to take the strength of, of people walking on it. And the idea behind the staircase was, it is a spiral staircase, a square spiral staircase, was to have the journey and the connectivity between two floors very easily provided. Besides that also the glass allowed that the light that comes through the skylight around the core does permeate into the lower floors. The, the third staircase that we have is a brass staircase. In fact, brass is an element that weaves through the entire building. In places especially where you don't expect too much light to come into, we have put a brass as a highlighter. So brass just opposed against concrete has this very strong inviting uh, feel to it because you're drawn towards this little golden color and the use of that would be then very much enhanced. So the third staircase that goes from the living room into the terrace is a very narrow staircase adapting itself to the occasional use of the terrace from the living room and it has been almost like a product design cut out of one single sheet of brass into the form that you see and it's a samba staircase so it's a very uh, jovial staircase you can say, very playful staircase 
for part people who join the party and all they can just walk up for a small break to the terraces to to have but an element that gives you a good comfort to your feet which is a very important part of the body to sense your environment to map your environment all the flooring in the building has been uh, done in wood leaving of course the bathroom and the kitchen this as i had mentioned also earlier is even even comforting people who are walking all the day barefoot the other the color of this wooden flooring has been selected as a very very flat a very neutral color like the kota stone also in the open areas which is a river finished kota stone um, the idea behind the selection of nearly all surfaces painted as well in material have been to support the silence within the space so we don't have very high contrasting colors in this space the contrast we think would be addressed and created over time by use of artwork like sculptures or paintings after we had created um, and interpreted the geometry and created this building form we did realize while walking through the spaces that it had opened up spaces that we ourselves didn't know would happen and um, this realization made us feel very strongly and in conversation with the clients we realized there are spaces created for memories to be born spaces that can be called yours all generations of living in this house can grow in this house by calling their home and i feel that transformation from a drawing board to a construction into something which is a quality in in words with alexander christopher alexander a quality without a name which can be occupied leads us to another very very uh, big question that we are facing regularly in our city that uh, buildings are called by people as well by investors properties and it is actually not about property it is about redefining your place where you live a home into an and making it to a home so i see this piece of architecture more as a canvas for people to live in and to bring life into it that's the idea behind the key idea behind architecture good the tea did it right